Is in. All right. We are live with another episode of Cafe Crash. I am your host, Daniel Crozier. I am coffeeed up, clearly. Wow. And I am here with the amazing actress and producer, Maria Paris. How are you, Maria? Hi, everybody. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me be a part of your show today. I'm very excited. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, you know, you're, you're pretty busy with, uh, you know, the, the Rita Guida show. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for everybody that's that's watching out there, um, you know, as an introduction, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, who you are, where you came from, and, and how you got into to acting and filmmaking. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll give you a nice paragraph. <laughs> Excellent. And I'll talk slow because I, unlike you, did not have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I did it on purpose because, slow. yeah, because once the coffee starts with a New York thing, then it's it's a mess and half the population understands me and half the pe population doesn't. And then my mother yells at me and says, slow down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so just by telling you that, yes, my name is Maria Paris. I am from New York, uh, <laughs> obviously with that accent, but I'm from upstate. I'm actually from Syracuse or as they call it, the Q's. And uh, my family came in by way of Italy. So I've got family in Brooklyn, in Manhattan, in Philly. So, <laughs> so those are my, my roots. Uh, I got bitten by the bug when I was just in kindergarten. And I lear uh, was learning the part of the Cheshire Cat for a little school play. I was basically four. So <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> I forgot all my lines. I freaked out stage fright the whole nine yards. The girl that was playing Alice in Wonderland had to feed me my lines. I was so embarrassed. I had let myself down, my family, and all the audience. And I had to do something to get noticed. And this is how it all started. Uh, the kid next to me was playing the the worm. Remember the worm with the, the hookah? Yep. And they had a barrel for him. Think about this. Four or five years old. We were that sophisticated. He had a little barrel yep. that he was sitting on. And I had to sit next to him. So I had this bright idea in my head at four years old. I'm going to make everybody laugh at me. So I missed my chair and fell on the floor. And everybody, all the kids laughed. The audience giggled and everything. I got up like, oh, like I meant to do that. Yeah. And that was it. I was hooked. It was all about the attention and making yeah. people laugh. And as cliche as it is, I've always loved to make people laugh. And it, it just, it makes me feel amazing, but it makes me, you know, other people tell me that they feel amazing. And I'm like, all right, it's a win-win. <laughs> nice. That's not selfish. That is hilarious. That early on too. <laughs> kindergarten. I, I had I, a learning I, disability I too. So yesterday. kids like me, they didn't let in the acting classes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> After that act, I don't blame them. <laughs> I got better. It got way better. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Oh, that's <laughs> That's, but that's, that's how I got started. But yeah, my parents were completely 100%. And if they're on here, I'm not sure yet. But uh, they were completely 100% me becoming an actress because they told me I had to get a real job. But you got to talk, you know, that was back in the day, though. Now, yeah. now everybody's allowed to do whatever they want. Right. You know, my mom always told me you can do whatever you want as long as you set your mind to it. Of course, it had to be legal. So as long as it was that, <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. But uh, I did. I, I went to uh, I went to college. I got a degree in uh, psychology and biology. Oh, cool. it's kind of a geek. Wow. I was on two honor societies, nice. but I still wanted to write and play and perform. So I wrote, direct, and produced three plays while I was in college. Oh, cool! And two of them got performed, and the third one got knocked out. Uh, one was on AIDS and homophobia. Good stuff. Yeah. And the other one was on. Um, uh, uh, like abuse, uh, domestic violence. Okay. And the third one was on interracial relationships, which are mixed relationships. Yeah. And the college shot out the last one. Now this wow. is not going to date myself, but nowadays mm -hmm. I'm sure they're kicking themselves because that's not even ever going to happen again to anybody, which is great. Right. Um, just for the whole diversity. I love that. Um, but yeah, I, I stayed creative all the way through and my parents were like, you're supposed to be studying. And I did, but I kept on acting. <laughs> wow, that's that's cool. Yeah, so yeah, you, you uh, while uh, working towards uh, those degrees, you were uh, you know doing you were writing, directing, doing all wearing all these hats, you know, for uh, for the you know, school plays. 
Uh, I, I take it these were dramatic pieces? Yeah, they were dramatic pieces because being a member of Psychi and Tri Beta, which is your biology department and your psychology department, the mm -hmm. best way to help get help and funding and have them put things together and allow you to use their spaces yeah. was to write about things that pertain to what you were studying and then mm -hmm. offering all the students extra credit for showing up to your show. Wow. Free audience. <laughs> Captain <it> out. <laughs> We're, we're locking the doors. Yeah, that's it. They had to hire another counselor after they got done with the uh, the domestic violence case. They called me up like the very next day after the show and they were like, listen, we love what you did, but we actually have to hire someone. The phone's ringing off. You opened up a huge can of worms with our on every every kid. But it was, it was amazing because for me, acting became showing people, right. you know, how to work out your things and, and how that you're right. not alone and that we're all together. And, you know, I know that pand pandemic, like you're walking through the grocery store and it's like, we're not in this alone. We're all together. Yeah. But in the real world before the pandemic, this was one of the ways for people to identify with each other. Like, yeah. okay, I'm not crazy if this is happening in my household or, okay, this right. is, this isn't supposed to be happening. It's, oh, that is the wrong thing to do. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. That's that's good. That's what good art should do. It should reflect yeah. the situation. What you know, what your reality is. Yeah. So, and then I got into comedy after that. <laughs> You're like, yeah. After that, <laughs> it's, it's got a little too heavy. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm very flexible as an actress. I, you know, li literally, I can pop my arms and legs out. I have a hyperflexible joint disorder. But no, uh, <laughs> I was uh, I was gonna say it's like, oh, they're detachable. Nice. Velcro <laughs> is amazing. Like Barbie. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, nice sound effect. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it was, it was good though. I, I did after, after college, uh, I did the stereotypical Sicilian mm -hmm. Italian thing. I got married, thought we were going to have kids. Ma, dad, we're all excited. Yeah. I crushed everybody's dream in the family by getting divorced and landing my first uh, couple of professional roles. Uh, and okay. one of them was Murder Watch Mystery which was a dinner theater on the Disney property. Thank you, Connie and Jeff Gay. Oh. Uh, another one was uh, doing a, uh, working with AC Comics as a three different, played a villain and villainess. Amazing. Uh, his AC Comics, Bill Black, he's been doing comic books for over 40 years. He gave me my first film credit, which helped me get my first Ooh. agent. And then I landed Tony and T's Wedding, which is an off-Broadway show in New York. And oh, then my family finally, finally was like, okay, you're in your element. We understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I promised them, I use my psychology and my biology every day. <laughs> yeah. in, in order to get roles. Uh, <laughs> I know what makes you tick. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Psychoanalyzing every character, every yeah. person on stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah there you go. Oh, yeah. So I have to give props to, to, to Russell Blackwell, John Dodonna, mm -hmm. and Paul Vroom for hiring me for Tony and Tina's because those were all my starts in, in professional. And they they worked with me, went with me. We I, I've never been able to uh, entertain like that in my life and just the hilarity and the jokes and the comedy. And then it went from there. Uh, the Rivership Romance, which was Robert Hopkins, we ended up doing uh, he had me asked me to do a comedy nature tour. Actually, I'm sorry. It was a nature tour, an echo tour. I made it a comedy nature tour. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> but, you know, the nice thing too about comedy is it's such an, you know, a, a wonderful, it's not easy, but it is a wonderful delivery system for really tough subjects. Oh, yeah. from, from, you know, the, the psychological, uh, you know, stuff that you were talking about earlier, all the way to you know science and and uh, biology and you know, yeah. things like that, you know, which can be really you know kind of dry, I guess, for some people. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you have to be careful too because in the business, it's very easily you know everybody's got their own opinion about comedy, and comedy is very subjective. So you're going to get a lot of people who love your work and a lot of people who hate it. And I, I think any actor, comedians, uh, improv artists, they, they, yeah. everybody has experienced that. And just being able to let it, you know, brush off you and, and keep yeah. on going. 
Uh, but I, I would have to definitely say that um, I, I thank Connie Gay and, and Jeff Gay for that the most because the first character I ever landed mm -hmm. was Maria Tamasino from oh. uh, Italy. And I basically, she told me, you got to own the room. And I was I was always outgoing, but I was shy. And in dinner theater, you literally have to walk into the room. You're right, right there. You're not on a stage. And nope. you better know what you're doing. And it was half script, half improv. And that's where you get your acting chops. I mean, to me, nice. that's exactly. <laughs> so they they molded me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Made you the fighting machine that you want today. <laughs> they really did. They taught me how to own a room walking in it. And and I, I never turned back. And I, I, I love them. To this day, we've all kept in touch. Even the Tony and Tina group and, and Bill Black and his group. I, like, we've just all, like, I, I love all of them. They're all in Orlando, Florida still. Oh, wow. Bless nice. their hearts. <laughs> well, uh, Maria, you're already getting a, a slew of comments coming in. Oh, so you okay. got, got Go Mark coming in saying, Mark, hello, hey, Mark. Maria. And uh, uh, <laughs> Elaine is uh, saying on board. Okay. Hey, yep. yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, Patricia, yay, yes. Maria. I couldn't uh, have made it through the pandemic without Patricia. Thank you. <laughs> commenting She's on your girl, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yep, comedy is subjective. Uh, mm -hmm. Ben, you done that. That's so, right. Have you uh, performed with this uh, gentleman before? No, Alan, uh, he actually became, Alan, how did we meet? We just, we met off of uh, online. He became a, a good fan of mine and I'm a fan of his. And it's, cool. it's, it's tough because we just started watching each other. I love the internet, especially for that, because I've been able to reach people that I never thought, yeah. you know, uh, and people that were just like, oh, we didn't know that was you. I saw you in this. Or yeah. um, I had a comic book following and I tried to, Bill Black helped me bring them over to the Rita Guida side. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Well, when you say comic book following, I, I noticed on IMDb and I haven't checked out the, these films, but you know, there's like uh, the the blue bulleteer. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and I think there's like a, the, the colossal woman or something like that too. Yeah. Yeah, so uh -huh. Bill Black, like I was saying, he uh -huh. has a, a comic book company called AC Comics, not DC. AC. Oh, it's yeah, yeah, I know it's of AC. Yeah, so he created, uh, he had seen me on stage. I was doing Little Shop of Horrors, which still yes. cracks me up to this day. I was playing Audrey. Awesome. Oh, Mr. Mushnick. Yeah, yep. so I was playing I Audrey. Was playing Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was so crazy because uh, being on stage with that, he comes up to me and apparently uh, the one of the directors that was in the audience, her husband runs a comic book store. He happens to be a, the, one of the comic book people that writes the comic books that are in the store. You know, cool. it's all that, that line, perfectly aligned with the universe type of thing. Yes. And he comes up to me and he says, I would like you to play this villain. I'm like, villain? <laughs> you just saw me play Audrey. <laughs> okay, not a problem. I can do it. Yeah. And he had been looking for somebody for years to play... Uh, Elizabeth Crimson, the evil sorceress of the ninth quadrant. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, so it was amazing. And then from there, it was like, I want to do more work with you. He's like, could you play the good guy? I'm like, sure. Yeah. So the, well, I would say good girl. So the good girl was um, the blue bullet tear. And the blue bullet tear goes on into the comic books to become uh, Night Vale. Uh, she's okay. like the omniscient, like the the step up, you know, from her her superpowers, and just amazing. So he has all these other little projects he would do in other comic books outside of Fem Force, which is an all villain and all uh, it's like villainess and and heroiness uh, comic book. He has yeah. other comic books, so he would ask me to jump in, you know, and play other parts. So that's why you see the colossal woman. So like, you know, all the, you know, the, the, the green screen and stuff where my, my friend Brenna Berry is stomping on me and she looks like she's, you know, 300 feet, 200 feet tall. And I'm still my little five foot, three and a half self. <laughs> that's so fun. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's gloriously ridiculous. <laughs> and it was, it was so, it was so great. Cause I actually got to go to the FX show. I got to go to, uh, I didn't, we didn't do the uh, comic con, but we did mega con. So we okay. went around like in Orlando and in Florida area. And um, it, it was a neat, so cool to like, I met, Kevin Smith and I was totally in in costume and I was like hey <laughs> you know and I'm signing autographs too and I'm like check me out <laughs> but, oh that's but, cool that, but, you know it's, that sounds it's... so fun yeah yeah oh geez yeah you got a bunch of comics coming coming in 
So you really did uh, a lot of legwork and, and got uh, got a lot of your friends. Yeah, you must have threatened them to death. Yeah, I did. I threatened them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's probably good. Look, if you don't join this today at 3 p.m., it's the <laughs> trunk, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> Shoot right to the forehead, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, Aaliyah, I think. Uh, yeah, that's, that's my bestie. Aaliyah <laughs> is my, my best friend and partner in crime. She actually, I, I recruited her into a Bill Black uh, movie. Uh, oh. And uh, which is the Sangor syndrome on there, or they called it bloodthirsty. They had they had two different names for it, nice. but she got to play a vampire, and we get to kick the hell out of me. And let me tell you something: Aaliyah is beautiful. She is the most oh my goodness, wonderful, kindest, compassionate person you've ever met. But man, when she put on those fangs and she became a mm -hmm. vampire, wow. <laughs> she nice. beat my character up. <laughs> Well, it pro you probably deserved it, and yeah. it was in the script. It was in the script. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but she she has been there. Uh, we've stayed in touch with each other. I moved to L.A. 12 years ago. And mm -hmm. to this day, we still talk and text each other. And oh, uh, even then, like, sometimes I'll be like, hey, read my lines. I'm going to send you my lines. <laughs> Help me. I got an audition. That's that's awesome. It, it's it's great to have that support system. It yeah. sounds yeah. like your, your family and friends are incredibly supportive. Oh, and then there's the ones that you have to get rid of because they're super toxic. But yes, mm -hmm. yeah, let's let's yeah. focus on the positive. <laughs> that, that's what the trunk is for, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yay, and then <laughs> Faye, my other bestie. <laughs> she made it. <laughs> Faye is a beautiful, talented actress and a musician. Cool. Uh, she's uh, she's a singer. I shouldn't call her a musician, excuse me. She is a singer who creates all of her own music and uh, she puts everything, kind of composes it all. She's amazing. Right. She is definitely the person when Aaliyah is not available, Faye has to jump in on Zoom and she's got to help <laughs> me, <laughs> when we've had, especially during the pandemic with this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. But Faye, Faye is so much fun and, and Faye has a character of her own that she does. I hope it's okay if I say this, it's Donya. And I really, really want her to bring her, that character out. We want to put it on Rita. <laughs> nice, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, these, uh, these superhero, uh, you know, movies that you were doing, mm -hmm. you know, you, you also uh, have a couple uh, horror film credits and, yes. uh, you know, uh, I mean, you, you, you do have, uh, a quite, quite a wide range of, uh, yeah. you know, things leading up to read it. Yeah. And it's, and it's amazing too, because, uh, the whole thing in Orlando, the, Blair Witch Project came out, you know, and that was like a big thing. So full sale. Yeah. <laughs> so like when you started first, like in the acting world, like in Orlando, full sale is a great school uh, that a lot mm -hmm. of film uh, uh, students came out of. And But you would always laugh because you would book one of those as a student film and you'd go on and they'd be like, Maria, this is so-and-so. So we're going to kill you here. And and then this is, you know, <laughs> it's always like, you're always dying. I had the best scream. By the time I got into like Tony and Tina's, you know, and had to project my voice, they were like, could yeah. you just pull the microphone away when you do that line? <laughs> 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 because you're, so I think the last will with Eric Roberts and Charles Gray, uh, oh. Charles Gray actually was from Tony and Tina's wedding. There were a couple uh, of people, very, very talented people in Orlando, Florida, uh, really. Because when you work at Universal Studios and Disney, it's like yeah. Broadway. And, okay. and the, these people are really like, because if you've ever watched their shows and stuff, you're just in awe. Like they sing, dance, they're a triple threat. I, I if I'm holding a, you know, like a, like a Corona in my hand, you know, and I got a microphone, I can karaoke like a badass. But um, I'm a belter, so they go. <laughs> My little jug. This is water, mom. It's water, ma. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Not it's drinking. Water. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's pretty good. <laughs> but um, but they do have um, they had all these uh these these horror movies that they did, but they had all this movie magic. So these guys all got together from Universal Studios and all the different friends that do a lot of the streetmosphere. Very very mm -hmm. talented group, and we did this. They did this movie called Last Will which you'll probably see in the credits. And I played Heather. I was the, the lead. And yes. it was amazing because, you know, everybody was, uh, I don't want to spoil it, lots of dying around me. <laughs> 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 but you get to be a really flexible actor because, especially in horror films, I think that people really miss the, the fun of horror films because horror films mm -hmm. bring out comedic aspects because you have to have levity in between the killings and then the killings bring out all the dramatic and the crying and the screaming so you really 
you really get a great range. It's the best acting class ever, I say, being in a horror film. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I, I love you know horror movies and everything. I, I mean, we're putting together a horror convention here in, in oh, Denver. Yeah, so. I saw that on your thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's great. So I, I I do another one for for these for that platform. You know, <laughs> podcast for that too. Well, yeah. <laughs> We'll have to have you on uh, on that one. I yeah, and if you want, I'm sure Eric Eric uh, Eric Miles and uh, did I say Eric Roberts? Eric Miles. I hope I said that right. Eric Miles and Charles Gray. I'm sure you know if I if I hit them up, I'm sure they'll be available if they if you cool. want to have them talk about it. Theirs actually went to the uh, Cannes Film Festival, and it did nice. get distribution. Yeah, so um, was super sweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's I have a cool. face. I have a poster with my face on it. It was so weird. It's so weird. Sometimes uh, uh, you're like, "Oh my god, that's me." That's so. me. It's like, wait, do yeah. I, am I really that? Tall? <laughs> yeah. It's very yeah. humbling. You're yeah. like, is my nose yeah. really that big? <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Uh, yeah. Damn no, that's Italian uh, jeans. <laughs> yeah. that, 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 how fun is that to to see you know your work reflected in in that way and received. You know, <sighs> it's, you know, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I would say right down from like the children's theater I did watching mm -hmm. any of your work, uh, if it's recorded or live and having people come to you and say, oh my God, you know, can I, can I, yeah. can I talk to you? How did you do this? Or do you know anybody that I should talk to? Or just, you know, wanting advice to, I, <laughs> best story ever, Murder wow. Watch Mystery Dinner Theater. I've got <laughs> little kid, I'm playing Maria Tomasino and she's the sexy, you know, this yeah. woman. And the mother comes up to me and she said, you have the most beautiful smile. And I'm like, oh, thank you. And she's like, your teeth are straight. You look great. And I'm like, yeah, well, this was, this was work. You know, you have to floss every day. Floss the ones you want to keep, as my cousin <laughs> Paul says. And uh, she said, can you please talk to my daughter? She's got to get braces and she's having a really hard time with it. And she doesn't want to do it. Right. And so I come over and, and the kid was actually younger than I thought that the child was going to be for braces. I was like, okay. Cause she was like probably like eight or nine. And usually you kind of wait a little bit longer before you get them. Like I just remember most of my, yeah, you know, like teenagers being them, yeah. but whatever they were going to do with her, she, she, I came over to her talking with my, my Italian accent and she She's um, she shows me this little cat that they got at the gift store for her and she named it after me. And the oh. greatest part about it is my name in the show was Maria. And so am I. So it was so like, oh, and so the mother looked at me and I said, so I, you know, so I hear you're going to get the braces. Let me tell you how this works. OK, you wear them and you wear those rubber bands. And I know they're so annoying, but you wear them every day and you make it. And I just went through the whole thing and told her, you know, to make them nice and straight. And then then you can look like a Maria. Huh? You have a nice smile. Just like this. See? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it was so cute. And that kid was so excited. So it's you know, it's moments like that where, you know, you really yeah. are affecting somebody. So, so sometimes you'll see it like, you know, people will reach out to you. I think, which is really cool with the, the platforms with Facebook and Instagram right. is I'll get private messages. Oh okay. my God, Maria, I was having the worst day ever. This was like exactly what I needed to see, you know? And I'm like, Oh my God, thank you. Cause I was having the worst day ever. That's why they got written. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad, you, cool. I'm glad it worked. <laughs> well, well yeah, that's such great, you know, therapy too. So, you know, if you're writing a piece or something, you put it out into the world, I mean, right there, it's therapy for you, but yeah. it's it's nice to see that that's kind of reciprocated yeah. as well. And and people, you know, if if you like something, chances are there's somebody else out there. Um, Usually, at least one. At least one person. <laughs> it's either my mom, my dad, or both. <laughs> and they're just being polite, you know. I, I, I have I'm, I'm their I, biggest fans. <laughs> It's like, that's, well, that's honey, awesome. well, you know, my ma and I get very silly because she says to me, every time I see you, you have less clothes on. I'm like, ma, oh, <laughs> it's, LA, you're required. it's a heavy shirt. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> should see my bikini. <laughs> um, so, so Maria, um, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit more about uh, Rita Guida and, and who yes, that character yes. is and, and how that came to be. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm going to go to the last question first. Okay. So those who are actors, I got to tell you, just never give up unless you need the money to like put the roof over your head, then yeah. balance your life and work both. And that's exactly how Rita kind of came to be because I had to get regular, we call them survival jobs. So uh, one of the jobs I had is I worked in liquor distribution and mm -hmm. I worked with 
oh my God, 15, 16 different liquor companies. Uh, so here I was at a store doing a promotion for liquor and there was a huge line of people like waiting to get out. And I just started cracking jokes to the, you know, it's a homemade audience, you know, <laughs> you're yeah. bored and no one wants to buy the particular product that you have. I don't want to take away the fact that I'm a good salesperson here, but just on that particular day, people didn't want to buy the product I had, <laughs> so, but they were, but they were like coming over, you know, and laughing and talking with me and, you know, and wanted to hear the spiel. And there were some, there were some sales, but here's this whole line at, at the store and they're buying whatever products they want. And there was one guy that was, I don't know if he was laughing harder than the rest of them, but I had started to joke because if those of you that are watching right now, many of you know that because of my hyperflexible joint disorder, I know it's a mouthful, I have ripped the ligaments off my labrums, which are the sheath that's on your hip bones and yes. the ligamentum terraces that a lot of basketball players do because it, uh, it does it side to side. So that's the whole joke about me being flexible because it's really true. <laughs> it's too flexible. So I was laughing. <laughs> See? Yeah. And so I was joking around about the fact that I was going to have to get this surgery and just cracking jokes. And as we say, like it does help you deal with things when you realize this is your reality, but you got to make the best of it. You know, and just the, the scare of it too, because mm -hmm. you never know with a surgery like that, if you're ever going to walk again, uh, if you're going to feel right. your toes, you don't right. know. So I'm cracking jokes about how I'm going to be on crutches for six months. But, you know, if anyone want to hires me, you know, directly, I do, uh, you know, I do do jokes and I, I'm also a really great, you know, admin assistant. So this man comes over to me and says to me, um, I feel compelled to help you. <laughs> and he said, OK. <laughs> and he said, I've just been listening to everything. And he says, you're funny. He goes, and they don't that that's just I, I just I, I want to help you. I want to be there for you. And so, you know, as every person should have here in LA is a business card. The minute anyone, you just pull it right out of anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my card. And I I there or other places. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Here's my card. And then you're like, um, you know, and I said to him, I said, I'm a jack of all trades, master of many. And he says, wow, I, I like that. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm great virtual assistant because I'll probably be on crutches, won't be able to get many places, but please let me know. I, I, I'm awesome. You know? So he laughs and he says, my name is Dennis Dugan. Don't forget it. And I'm like, okay. And then he said it twice and went out the door. And I always laugh when you meet people, especially at, at liquor promotions, because, um, you know, and it depends on where you are too. You can be in a grocery store with liquor promotion, but men, I love you all. I do. And, and, you know, it's, it's amazing. But I think the funniest thing in LA is that everybody likes to approach you and tell you that there's somebody big and they're a producer and they're going to make you right. a star. Right. And um, so for women who are coming out here, I don't care what year it is. Uh, it's still the same. And just yep. check them out beforehand. <laughs> yeah. So this wasn't one of those situations. This was a situation where this guy gives me the card and I'm like, eh. So I put it away, you know, I put it, you know, I, I, I got to put it away. Like he had given me his information. I put it away. I got home after the gig. I'm making my, my, you know, doing my laundry and I get a text message. Hey Marie, it's Dennis Dugan here. Just so you know, I'm a real live person. Check me out on IMDb. Okay. So let me explain something to you. I'm doing my laundry. So I check out IMDb. If you guys don't know who Dennis Dugan is, please, by all means, look it up on IMDb. Not only is he a talented, famous actor, he is also the director of a lot of Adam Sandler movies. Nice. You know, Madison, Jack and Jill, Grown Ups 1 and 2, just to name some. And I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Freaking out. Call my friend Tim Powell who, if you've watched Rita Guida, you've seen that name come up a lot. And, and, and I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? He goes, first off, talk slower. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's Take like, a sedative. Just <sighs> breathe, yeah. give him that phone call and yeah. see, you know, what he wants to, you know, talk to him. Let him talk to you. I'm like, got this. <laughs> so go ahead and uh, get on the phone with him. He couldn't be nicer than nice. Just the sweetest man talking yeah. to me about how he was really shocked by my comic timing and how well I did comedy just in that moment there at the store and said, you can't teach somebody that. Yeah. That is That just happens. You yeah. know, and you're almost about to cry because you're trying so hard out here. And he said to me, this is going to sound cliche. So here's your second cliche for those who are keeping count. Um, yeah, no, we're keeping it. All right. Yeah, too, right? <laughs> is don't wait, create. 
because I mm -hmm. came out here not in my 20s. I'm not going to date myself here, but mm -hmm. I wasn't 20 when I came out here and I was uh, in my, my 30s. And it's very, very difficult as a woman because at 30, you're already old. <laughs> They're like, oh, we can't, we can't. So you, yeah. you, you have that problem. So he said, you got to show them. And I know that nowadays, since 2012, when I had that conversation with him in right. 2013, it was around there, that that's kind of everybody now is creating their own content and actors especially are having to learn how to use the camera, learn how to do the lighting, write, yep. direct, do all these things that you never thought you would do. You can't just be an actress anymore or an actor. Yeah. Uh, you can't just do that anymore. Uh, so I, I took his solid advice. I jumped on the phone with one of my stand-up buddies, Karen May, who mm -hmm. huge help um, with the stand-up scene for me. She would get me out there. And uh, so we sat down and we created after a couple of shots of tequila, sorry, Ma, uh, we were like getting very silly. And we thought, you know, because I had this improv background and all this stuff, I even did groundlings. I did Scott Sedita. I did all that stuff. I said to her, you know, the, the state farm commercials in the state farm right. commercials, they have this joke. And if you're, if you watch my Rita Guida show, you'll see that there is another little playlist. And those were the three pilots of the Rita Guida show, uh, which is the sketch comedy show. And what they did, what we did was, it was a, a spoof on State Farm. Do you guys remember the jingle? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so don't have my Corona and my my karaoke machine. Sorry. No, um, but <laughs> you're doing very well. Keep going. All right. All right. So <laughs> we sat back and we were like, "How about this?" And this is how it all got birthed, guys. We went ahead, started laughing, and said. Wouldn't it be funny if somebody was trying to put someone in the trunk and then the state farm rep had to show up and we had to go ahead and figure this out? You know, and of course, I'm so mafiosa. Karen's laughing her head off. She thinks yeah. it's hilarious. We're going back and forth. And we were like, no, better yet. Why don't we make it like a girl that and she's like a Guida. And I'm like, oh, yeah. So we're going back and forth. And the reason why her name is Rita Guida is because it had to fit with the jingle. And okay. the jingle became in the spoof. Like a good Guida, Rita is there. Nice. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. So it was either Nina or Rita, and Rita worked the best. It had to be two syllables. And it just, it was so hilarious. And we did it. The first thing came out. Tim Powell jumped in like a champ and helped me, filmed it. He's a one man show. I mean, he can, like, literally, this man, I've never seen somebody who's this talented who can do this many characters in, and embody so many different people. But for my show, he filmed, edited, did the sound, did wow. the lighting, everything. I owe him so much. Uh, when I first get like that, that red carpet, wow. I'm going to have to invite him instead of my man. <laughs> but he, um, he was great. And then I showed it to my acting coach at the time, Daryl Maori, and he was like, something's missing. And went through and said, you got to be a little bit more violent with that shoe. And I was being a little tender with the shoe, quite frankly. Wow. So he's like, make sure that guy is out. And then that's where it became. So if you ever, if you watch the trailer that we have, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you will see me beating the hell out of someone in the trunk. And that is how Rita Guida became Rita Guida. Nice. <laughs> and right. thanks to Dennis Dugan, he would watch every episode in that three little pilot and then said to yeah. me, okay, you're getting a little too jokey, going a little too vaudeville. We got to pull it back, switch mm. some stuff around. He was so kind to me. I switched Karen had stepped out and then became the Rita Guida show. Uh, I had some money come in. I had a private investor, a uh, private production cool. company come in and help me. And, uh, and we just really started playing. Uh, it costs money. It costs time. And yeah. when you are working, uh, you know, a regular job, it's, it's hard sometimes to get everybody together on your schedule, their schedule. Uh, yeah. But we, we have like, I think 10 up. I should know this. I'm sorry. I, I just, I throw things up there and I forget. I think I have at least full nine episodes. Great. 10 <laughs> up there, but then became birth to what do you want to do with this show? Right. So just to give you this last piece of it, what ended up happening was Tim Powell said to me, Maria, listen, the show's a lot of fun. It's short, but where are you going to go with this? And I was really mad at Tim at first. And he, he knows that. And I love him. But I was just like, I was just having fun. <laughs> it wasn't so much mad. It was sad. <laughs> but A lot of fun. Ten episodes of yeah, fun. Yeah, it was ten episodes. And, and he said, well, he said, you should think about that. I was in a uh, workshop with Mary Lou Belly. And I had a guest uh, director there, uh, Leslie Collins. Love her. And 
I sat down with her and she said, what do you think? I said, that's why I'm asking you. What do you think? <laughs> You're bigger on the echelon than I am. Help. And yeah. she and I had this beautiful conversation. And I went ahead and uh, thanks to Michael Carson, my man, mwah, and to Ray Carcillo, my buddy, mwah, I uh, they helped me go ahead and it took about a year and a half to try to figure out where to go with my show, but I made it into a, uh, the pitch now is a 30 minute dark comedy nice. based on Rita Guida. And it is just, um, it, we did a, Ray encouraged me to do along with my deadline junkie group that I go as a writer group, a great group. If you want to do some readings on scripts, Ashley Myers, Adam Strange, oh my God, Greg, and, and David Winger, thank you guys, and David Rush. These guys were so great. They uh, helped me kind of solidified stuff, pulled stuff mm -hmm. apart. Bill O'Leary, my acting coach, and uh, Joanna Sanchez uh, stepped in when I had like ideas and what to do. But we ended up ripping things apart and creating the pilot. That's why it took so long. Uh, and it is GoFundMe that actually produced the show. No kidding. And so that pilot up there was done by GoFundMe. And I cannot thank the people, all the friends, all the fans from Facebook and Instagram that jumped in. Uh, and David Souza, who in, at the end, and Joe Cornett, who ended up helping me produce it at the end uh, with their with their investments. And I, I know that they're happy. They told me they were. If you're lying, I don't care. I appreciate it. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. You know, you know, it, it sounds like you know, the, the behind the scenes is, is just as epic as what's in front of the camera. Oh, let me let me tell you something. I'm, I'm just going to let this be known. See how nice my hair looks? Okay. I had to color it because after the pilot, <laughs> the stress that one goes through to produce something <laughs> like this, it's not simple. But right. in the end, when you get to see that final product, when you get to be on set and watch the actors saying the lines that you wrote or Ray wrote or Michael wrote, you're just laughing your head off. You're like, oh, my God, we're making it happen. We're making it happen. I mean, Tim Powell and I at one point were basically holding each other's hands going, we got like a real camera guy here, Tim. You get to actually be in front of the camera. <laughs> He's a real person. Oh, it's on a dolly, Tim. Look at they're like doing this thing and they're zooming it by. <laughs> it's not hey, a static buddy. show. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. No, that, that's that's fantastic. Uh, Maria, let's let's go ahead and let's uh, let's play the the trailer from YouTube. Yes. Um, real, uh, real quick, can you give us a little setup? Because this was back in uh, I, I see it was okay. posted in 2015. Yeah, so in 2015, when Obama was still president, um, so with <laughs> no politics, I never talk politics, but there's a joke in here. So, <laughs> but but uh, this this we're setting this up as um, this is Rita on a typical day at home with her man, and mm -hmm. uh, this will give you a really good idea who Rita is, and you'll see that she needs counseling and a behavioral management therapist, uh, who is played by me <laughs> yeah. and her name is margaret there we go nice <laughs> all right do you have the clip <laughs> hi i'm rita guida like a good guida rita oh, that's is the trailer. here <laughs> Pumpkin. Jesus, Mary and Joe. No, Rita! Not the show! Ah! Hi, I'm Rita Guida, and today we're going to show you how to get your very own BFF. Rita Guida, is that French? <laughs> hey, Doc. Nice shoes. Why the tears? Annabella, meet Rita Guida. Piacere. I got this. <coughs> <coughs> One. He has Obamacare! <laughs> hey, looks like there's something to this therapy thing after all. See you next week, Doc. What the f***? Get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> now that's the trailer. <laughs> Do you have the other piece? Oh, the, um, yeah, the let me, let me... I can see it. It's the one with the, the face with the background of the, the football game. Yep. 
Uh, let me scroll down here. So we got the the reel for uh, Rita Guida. All right. Baby, you dropped your work boots on my shoes and you scuffed them up. Where? Right there. Now, Rita, go pay back to you. Don't you get so Sure. After the game. My brand new Pradas. So this justifies the detached retina, deviated septum, ocular implant, six months of facial therapy, not to mention a lifetime supply of Botox injections. What? He's got Obamacare. He ruins a shoe, he gets a shoe. Oh, that's pretty fun. It, you, you're playing so many different characters too while that's going yeah. on. Yeah. I, I had met a, a really amazing actor named uh, Dominic Lombardozzi, and uh, I actually got to work with him in the Frank and Ava movie, which was that out of all the comedy roles, this was a dramatic role, and it was a role of a lifetime for me to play Nancy Barbado Sinatra, which is Frank's wife. And nice. uh, I had showed him, I was showing him like what I was doing with his friend Rico, and Rico had actually played Frank Sinatra. and. He said to me, don't typecast yourself because Dominic Lombardozzi is also Italian. And he said, you know, um, you're going to get stuck in that. And then that's all they're going to see you for. Mm -hmm. So from that day on, that's when all the rest of those characters started showing up on Rita. <laughs> Not, oh, that's, that's, so, that's so much fun. Jeez. That's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Jeez. Yeah. So, but it <laughs> you know, with, with, with this, uh, you know, wearing all those, those hats, you know, producing, writing, you know, uh, yeah, you, you directed a, a few of the episodes. Is that correct? Oh, well, I always directed them, uh, with, okay. with Tim. So Tim was always, he was always the, the one directing and then we'd step back and we'd watch him and he's like, do you like it? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, I think that works. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I co-directed, directed, and, and you yeah. know, sometimes like a, a tag team of directing. But yeah, he, uh, it was the both of us for sure. But the pilot he directed. Nice. That in, uh, in where is it uh, now? Where's the the project now? You've got some of the episodes on on YouTube, so people can can uh, you know go and follow. You can you can build your audience. The, uh, but uh, are you pitching to uh, different outlets or, you know, what's that process? Yep. So, yeah, so this is the new process for me. I've never done this before. So super nervous, ask a lot of questions. I have a lot of friends that have been amazingly helpful. Uh, Robert Dolan, God bless him, spent so much time with me. <laughs> and he, he compiled 75 pages of info of how to pitch a show. <laughs> and then I, of course, my deadline junkie group, I asked all of them, Julie Bergman and, and, and Susan, oh my God, I can name all of them, it take too long. Um, but I started hitting everybody up. So the process basically goes like this. What all of you see on the, the little banner that's coming off the bottom here, the mm -hmm. readaguidashow.com that you go to literally takes you to a YouTube page that shows you all of the sketch comedy shows that Rita Guida has had since 2013. Uh, so basically one to two a year. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It kind of gives you a really great base and background of what Rita has become known as. Then you will see it's still up there. I left it open just because I knew we were doing this. Uh, I actually launched the pilot. We wanted to have a premiere, but unfortunately, because of the pandemic, I wasn't yeah. able to uh, have people come to a, a actual theater. So we put it up on YouTube and have just been trying to promote it and show people this is the framework of what the pilot will be about. You mm -hmm. always see Rita in the sketch comedy as a free agent. She has nobody else but to her that she answers to and her Margaret, her therapist. But you'll see in the pilot, when, when you guys get a chance, it's only 15 and a half minutes. It's a comedy. It goes fast. But the idea is it's a, uh, it's a pitch piece. It is yeah. basically, we call it like a proof of concept. Yep. And I've gone ahead along with... Um, help from um like i said my robert and my my uh, deadline junkies my my boyfriend michael carson and uh my newfound friend lenny messi uh <laughs> who is helping me uh put this stuff together um but just to uh outline everything and show people 
this show can actually be a 30 minute dark comedy. And what will, so when you do a pitch deck, you would literally have to say what you want to see happen in the first season, what you want to see happen in the second and third. And we want to do this as episodic. I don't, I don't think Rita meets the medium of being a film. Uh, I think the show is more fun, short and in your face. Uh, I've always written like that. Uh, that's kind of always been my, my way of writing. It's always short to the point you're in, you're out. Um, and I think that's probably because maybe I, I was brought up that way as, as my family and friends would say, Maria, get to the point. <laughs> well, you, you, get to the point, you have to stay in there the whole season. So, you know, yeah. yeah. So each episode. Up. Yeah. And that was the fun part. Cause you sit back and you're like, how do I do this? Oh my God. So, right. but it was so amazing and interesting to come up with, with the whole thing and, and figure out, you know, okay, so now Rita's family is going to be involved in this situation. Rita has a brother that no one knows about that we never talked about. Rita has this and just, yeah, yeah. and just, and, and playing along about, you know, her love interest. And because there's a lot of jewelry that's on Rita. And uh, what a lot of people don't realize is each jewelry piece has a significance to me personally and mm. to the character. So okay. uh, just some things you'll see a very big uh, long, I don't have them with me right now, but you'll see a very big long necklace with almost like a little brooch at the end of it. And that was from Karen May's grandmother who passed away. We honor her uh, to this day by me wearing that necklace every time I play Rita. Uh, oh. You'll see uh, a wedding ring around my neck in the sketches. And that wedding ring came from the Tony and Tina show and the Rivership Romance wedding show. And right. that is just uh, a big remembrance of how how hard it was and how much I succeeded and, you know, the levels of your career. Yeah. Uh, but also because of the people that were involved in that production. So I carry that with me. Uh, but that becomes a different focus for the pilot. And I'm not going to ruin it for you. You'll get to see that. Um, and just, yeah, like to the, to the bracelets, to the watch, my ma's watch on my arm, my, my ma's watch <laughs> you know, that I broke. That's, and I know my, sorry. <laughs> that, that's, that's sweet that, you know, that, that, that you're doing it. It's so endearing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and all the rings too. Uh, a lot of the rings are from Murder Watch's Maria Tomasino character. That mm -hmm. when the show closed, I I worked with them for seven to eight years on that show every weekend on Disney property, and uh, you know it was amazing. But they let me keep the jewelry when I left to LA, and so I, I wear that jewelry to honor them. So yeah, I'm gonna get all misty now. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> um, yeah, that, it's it's uh, you know such a, a wonderful endeavor. Um, I don't know if, if you've been able to, you know, uh, do any more productions or, or organize anything during, you know, the pandemic or, you know, has, yeah. has, have you been writing more scripts or has it just been getting ready to do the, the, uh, the pitch process? We got really, really lucky. I ended production four days before the pandemic shut us all down. Wow. Okay. That was incredible. Um, the montage that you will see in the pilot, mm -hmm. God bless Sam Wilkerson. Uh, and for those of you who are not religious, I'm sorry, I, I'm Catholic. It just comes with my territory. I just speak it, I'm not being rude. <laughs> but uh, Sam came out uh, mask on and I looked at him, I said, I can't wear a mask, but we both tested negative and we quick did the montage right here in, in my apartment. Uh, mm. to make that, to finish it. All the editing happened virtually, which was very, very difficult. And I ended up editing the uh, piece uh, with help from Sam uh, at the end and with Tim Powell and Kurt yeah. Weiser. God bless Kurt Weiser. <laughs> also another deadline junkie who jumped in and sound and, and lighting. This is, he's responsible for these lights and my man is responsible for the actual lights. <laughs> Gave those to me. So yeah, so that whole thing, I'm sorry, I'm getting off track, but that, um, that ended. So when that got done, I, I worked on the show the whole entire pandemic of 2020, but I did have uh, more auditions than I usually did were virtual, which, you know, thank you agent. And I did audition. I didn't book anything, unfortunately. But um, what I also did was uh, Ron Siegel from the Murder Watch Mystery Dinner Theater show who played my, my, one of the Dons, the Maria Tomasino's father, Don Jumbo. He, uh, he wanted to do a show with me. And so since we were all in the pandemic, he has a friend named John Frieda, very talented actor who's in New York City. So while he was in Arizona, I was here in LA and John was there. 
They mailed me, no kidding guys, mailed me a green screen, a camera, everything. We set, and we had it, set it up. I had all of my lines. We did all these rehearsals virtually and we put this piece together and it's called the casting office. And I think that's on my IMDb now. You'll see that, uh, yeah. which was amazing. I did write another Rita Guida piece uh, and I, I just realized that I had launched it and then put it on private. So I'll take that off so you guys can all see that if you haven't seen it yet. That was another little thing that I did here in the in the place. And I also did a, um, it's called Ask Rita. It's an Ask Rita segment where you can ask Rita a question and she'll answer you. <laughs> and uh, you. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I did a lot of that. Um, and and that was that was pretty much it. So yeah, it was hard, but you did you you always tried to stay as creative as you could. So I was always yeah. writing, and I'd like to give a, a shout out to to Marianne Maisano. I don't know if you're on this right now. She is an incredible comedian. She mm -hmm. had booked me right before the pandemic uh, for mm -hmm. me to ha have my comeback of being a stand-up comedian, and cool. uh, it's in the Italian Chicks of Comedy, uh, which uh, she worked with Danny Aiello and. God rest his soul. So, uh, but she she has this, she's an amazing actress, uh, comedian, just so talented to jump in different things. But we became fast friends virtually. Yeah. And I will be doing uh, a, since we couldn't do it in person, so as you're asking me about being creative, I wrote uh, a set and put the whole stand up together and we decided instead we're going to do a Confessions of an Italian Chick which will Ooh. be shown. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of jokes in there, but uh, it'll be shown uh, probably about two or three weeks from now. So we're going to be filming it next week, actually. So, wow, uh, that's cool. So, so, yeah. And well, I have a regular uh, job, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. What, what's the regular job right now? So right now I've been very, very lucky. Uh, I got laid off like a lot of us and was totally broke, freaked out. Thank you, Patricia, for keeping me from a lot. <laughs> but uh, what I ended up doing was uh, working as a, I'm a manager is what I do right now. I went, I'm a manager. I work full time virtually for the Los Angeles County Public Health Department for a division. Oh. I am a division manager for contact tracing and vaccinations appointments for the call centers. Oh, so yeah. um, I'm very, very busy during the day. Uh, yeah. And I have learned so much about COVID uh, that it is, I, I don't even have to watch the news because what we're doing is what you guys see. Uh, yeah. And sometimes I'll tell you what, I still think they're inflating some of those numbers because I'm not seeing some of that during the COVID crisis, but it did get people to, to put the masks in and go California. We are lowest incident out of a lot of states right now. Good. Let's yeah. keep it that way. Okay. I'm not saying you got to get vaccinated because I don't even know how I feel about it, but please, for God's sakes, don't sneeze on each other. Don't touch your face. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, my girlfriend and I just finished our, our second uh, Pfizer shot. Uh, but, uh, but a couple of us, uh, uh, a couple of the counties uh, here, it looks like we're, we might be heading back to lockdown again. Oh no. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah See, that's we, what we're afraid of. Yeah. We got a bunch of, you know, fun, stupid people that, you know, don't, don't like to, to wear masks and, you know, yeah. do stupid things. So, so it spreads, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's tough. Yeah. And, it, and I just I tell people, like, if you don't want to wear the mask, I completely get it. Just stay home. Just stay yeah. with your group. You know, I, it's just, it, it's there. It's it's too proven now. It's too proven, and I know I, I get I get yeah. too many friends and loved ones will get mad at me for saying anything. So I'm gonna let that topic go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would like to make good graces. <laughs> so, uh, back to the uh, the stand up though. Yes. I you know with with uh, your personality and your flair for comedy, you know uh, I would have thought that uh, you know you've you've always done stand up but uh, but you haven't this is a new endeavor right well so stand up started with the river ship romance when they asked me to do the echo tour that's when it started because then oh. it became maria here's 6 to 10 pages all about the nature that we're going to be floating by in the boat in your lake and it's a big it's a big ship it's 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 two deck three decks actually uh, mm. the basement and then the main deck and then the top deck and uh and beautiful boat, but it was so funny because I was like, how do I make this, you know, I've got to memorize all this and this has got to be interesting where people aren't falling asleep. And Robert said to me, Robert Hopkins said, just make it your own. Uh, right. And there were times where we got in trouble for some of the things I said and I had to pull it back. Um, <laughs> we got in trouble for some of the things you said. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> so, well, I had this one, I had a couple of jokes that, that I would do about the birds and this and that, you know, yeah. just had to like, you know, bring it back a little bit, but it was good. I mean, there was one where we had like, you know, I would joke about the native Floridians hanging out in their natural habitat. That kind of caused some concern. We didn't realize the, that the speaker system actually went out to those uh, ba outer banks that we were going because they were like waving and like, like Mardi Gras and yeah. one, somebody mooned us. You know, and there's, you know, in the, in the, the, the river boat, you know, the, the age range is anywhere from 35 on up to over a hundred, you know, you got grandparents and families on these things, you know, it's the last thing you need your, your, your kids seeing and the grandparents like, Oh, my heart, you know? Yeah. So no, I no, would just, crack. <laughs> so I had some, some jokes and, you know, I wasn't swearing, but they thought Maria, <laughs> but it was great. And people would come up to me and they were like, where's your stand up? I want to watch you. And I was like, Oh, I don't do stand up. So when I got to California, nice. yeah. it's very uh -oh. hard to be noticed here. Oop, what happened? Me there? Uh, we, we froze up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're still coming through. Okay. Oh, we still read you. <laughs> Texan? Houston? Yeah. <laughs> Houston? Uh, El Paso? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Do we have a problem? Okay, we're good. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so with the stand-up, when I came to LA, uh, it's very hard to get noticed here. It really is. You got to be a certain look. You got to be a certain way. You got to be a certain person, and you just have to. Oh, that's you. We want you. And I just didn't have that. Uh, I guess whatever. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I'm not upset yeah, about it. Up. You'll stand out. <laughs> I really was gonna go red with my hair, but everyone said uh, no. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, so what ended up happening was they went ahead and said to me. Um, it were not said to me, my friends were all like, you should try improv. You should do this. And that's how I started the groundlings and that. And I got really mad doing improv because out here, this isn't everybody, but the improv team that I happen to be was all about, let's show boat for ourselves and every man for themselves. And that's not how improv works. No. It's a team. Yep. I've always come from Tony and Tina's team effort, murder, watch mystery, right. dinner theater, team effort, films. Everything right. has always been an ensemble for me. Look and suicide squad team effort. Team, exactly. I love that movie. I love that movie. I've watched it like four times already. Um, so, but I, I told, uh, I told my mama, I called my mom after the, the, the bad show went down and, and I, and I swore, which I don't like to swear to my, my mom. I like I always get worried about that. It's not like she doesn't know I don't do it, but you just have respect for your parents. Okay. For you who are younger, your millennials respect goes a long way. Uh, <laughs> so, but what I said to her was, uh, you know, if I'm going to, do this by myself and have to have my own back. I might as well go into stand up. Right. Called up Karen May. Karen May was overjoyed because she had already been doing stand up and she got me into the world. And I started doing stand up. Um, oh my God. Jody Miller, God bless her. She's a fantastic comedian. And she uh, she was my coach and she coached me. And uh, I think it started, yeah, it started in 2012. So I went from 2012 doing Rita, and, you know, with it right alongside it, doing stand up on crutches after my surgery, which was hilarious, hopping up on the stage because people yeah. thought it was part of the act and they realized it wasn't. Uh, but just even using that and all my experiences. But yeah. I stopped doing stand up. Uh, last show was in like January 2017. I wanted to concentrate more on the acting and wanted to concentrate more on what to do with Rita. Yeah. Wow. So, but, but if we're going to keep getting shut down back and forth like this, I might as well do the stand up because it's going to end up being like this. It's going to be conversational, virtual jokes. Yeah. 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 Pre jokes and jokes and jokes. <laughs> we need them. God, we need yeah. them. <laughs> you know, we, do. We, we need that, that sense of levity uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So man, that's, that's fantastic. It, it's, it sounds, you know, Maria, it sounds like you have, you know, quite the, the, the story, you know, uh, past, you know, quite the ride. Yeah. And, I uh, hope it was fun. I don't know. We got 57 minutes. Was it fun? Did you enjoy yourself? Do you feel like I, I left you with some well, good advice? We'll, <laughs> we'll send out a questionnaire and see what, uh, with, you know, what people do. but you know, with, uh, with up and coming actors right now, do you, do you have any, uh, you know, any uh, advice for uh, new talent? Make sure that acting is not the only thing you know how to do. Because and it, and it shouldn't just be waitressing and, and, and I know that those are great jobs because of the schedule, yeah. but I mean, have a background because luckily for me, having the, 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 the limitations I do to having to be virtual right now and stuff like that, uh, admin work, 
Excel, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, know how to do those things because you can still work for a production company and then slowly work your way in. You never know. I right now work for San Rafael Productions by Joe Cornett. Joe Cornett ended up helping me invest in my Rita Guida. Nice. Who would have thought that would have happened? And now I'm going to be filming with him uh, in Arizona next month. And I'm oh, playing. I got it's kind of a, a still quiet, but I, I can't tell you anything yet. But but that is because I'm his production coordinator. I work as a clearance coordinator for Viacom uh, with uh, Robert uh, Dolan. I worked with a production manager. Uh, I, I helped out. You know, so knowing those things, don't just be, I'm an actress and that's all I do. Or I'm an actor, that's all I do. Know how to use the camera. Know about lighting. Know about scripting. Even if you can't write, understand how scripts work. Understand how characters work. Understand how casting works. Because... Sometimes your friends are not right for your part and it stinks, but find the boundaries and work and, and you will, you will find success. You know, you can, you can live in this beautiful studio apartment for $1,500 a month. No, I'm kidding. Be better than me. Yeah. Be, be better than me. You, you guys have more years on you than I do if you're young. Well, so. I, I, I think uh, at the same time, <laughs> it doesn't matter what age you are, just do it and don't hold yourself back. Yeah, no, and you can't, at any age, and I shouldn't say it like that, at any age you can do it, but I do know that in LA, the younger you are, the better, but it doesn't mean as older you can't do it. It just means you've got to have more skills. So yeah. if there's more competition for you, for sure. And right. and I'm, I'm just not going to sugarcoat it. Yes, you can do anything you want to do, but it's got to be you who does it. You can't yeah. expect it to come to you. Right. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. That's, that's, yeah. that's Oh, got all serious. Oh God. <laughs> I know. I know. Where Sorry. are we going from now? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I guess that's Take it. That so. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, thanks so much for, for coming on the show and, yeah. and talking about, uh, you know, your craft and, and, you know, where you come from and, uh, and, you know, what, you know, what we're looking forward to, to seeing Rita Guida and, uh, where, uh, where she ends up. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And subscribe for God's sakes if you haven't subscribed. Even if you don't have a YouTube account, make one just for me. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So uh, after this show, everybody, you know, go to the website, go to the YouTube page. It's streaming down below. Copy and paste it. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, get your friends to do it. Otherwise, threaten them with, uh, you know, imprisonment in a trunk of a car. Right, right. It's and that's what we do. We, we un, un, unreleased that uh, that trunk release. It's, it's not in there. <laughs> not in the yeah. trunks we use. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> uh, Rita will come to your house. Yeah, if, oh, click, click your heels three times. She will appear. That's it. Just do the jingle. Like a good Rita, Rita is here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, Maria, th uh, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you. Uh, hang out for a few minutes uh, yeah. after we uh, we sign off. But, uh, you know, for for everybody out there, uh, well, come on, switch over to that. Uh, oh, my branding. Huh, huh. Nothing. Okay. Sti everything's sticking. Oh but, no! It says because so cold where you are. <laughs> apparently so. Uh, you know, thanks to to Mutiny uh, Cafe. Uh, if you need to start a revolution, make sure it's uh, caffeinated. And uh, yeah, everybody. Yeah, thanks so much for for tuning in. And uh, you know, take care of each other out there. We love you. And uh, you. Yes, take you care. and your loved ones are they be happy, healthy, and safe. Okay, no matter what. Mwah. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> All right. Take care. Have a good night.